Uh, okay, right. Hey, Manuel. Hello. I've been wanting to come and see this. I, I, as I've been walking around yesterday, I saw people sort of captivated by the Leaf. I mean, we know the Leaf Audio stuff. We've seen it before. Uh, but it's lovely to see this, this demo station here. And I know you're running stuff into Alm and you've got some contact mics. So what are you showing? Um, we have the microphonic sound box, our old goodie, so to speak. Yep. Um, on, generally, everything we do is based on body sound transmission and picking up uh, sound waves from the surface. So we have two contact microphones inside the microphonic sound box, two amplifier channels, very low noise and yep. high gain. So it, uh, you're able to, to capture all these small sounds like this. in a very intimate way, and there's no noise flow between you it's and the sound. It's kind of like ASMR in a way, so isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. With the brush, in a way, yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. And uh, lots of sound designers use it uh, for movie, for game sound, or just music. Yeah. Um, it's like so almost like a mini Foley studio, with, but with so much more, right? That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, funnily, I think the Foley community didn't, um, didn't find the sound box so far. Um, what, did you, were you aiming for that? Did you think that would be somebody, that, uh, a group of people that would be interested? To me, it's very logical somehow. Yeah. But um, many sound designers have it. There's no door, I suppose. But you could get footsteps quite easily on that, couldn't you? Oh, I'm sure, yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the reverb is a bit... Uh, wait. Yeah, and I guess if you tap that with different things, you get all kinds of sound. Yeah, and everything uh, which makes the box resonate. is captured then. And the way I use it, for example, is um, I like to use loopers, like these Enzo thing inside the AUM yeah. software in that case. And then, layer by layer. Yeah, I saw you playing with bow and a, and a, and a fine rosin thing as well. Oh, that's lovely. Or oh, here. It's like, it reminds me of those uh, old Lalo Schifrin kind of uh, Dirty Harry sounds and uh, oh. with the piano, it's like the piano wire, isn't it? The I don't know this, but okay, possibly you're right. Oh, that's just a single piece of rosin. It's a single uh, hair, from, hair. The, from the bow. Oh, yeah. And you can capture all these details in a very good quality and then process it in, in the way you want. Like, I would use loopers and some reverbs and stuff like this. Uh, sound designers want to pitch it down a lot, for yeah, example. Yeah. And um, what we managed to do is, the, it looks like a simple wood box, but actually it has a very uh, good power circuitry. And we were able to get rid of all these noise, which you normally have above the hearing range. Right. So if you, for example, put these cork workers and that stuff, into an analyzer, you see these peaks short before 20 kilohertz. Right. And if you pitch this stuff down a lot, it, it comes in the way, directly right. in right. your face. And this is obviously not what we wanted. So, and we managed to get rid of all this stuff. So if you sample the sound box at 192 kilohertz, sample it, uh, pitch it down by five octaves, there's nothing uh, appearing nothing in, in the, the hearing way. range. But it's also, I mean, the, the thing that's, because there's a lot of gain in this and it's very acoustically isolated. It's not picking up anything from the outside it's not picking up our voices or our you know you do you i wouldn't anticipate hearing a little bit of that so you've obviously got that isolation going on as well right uh no not really i no, mean uh, sometimes especially on these kind of fairs like here when people are talking and it's loud in the room uh, it's a bit of a problem uh, in live shows i personally never had the problem of feedback and if i have my ableton running i take one notch filter yeah take out this frequency a bit and then problem solved. So there's not really a big issue with playing on festivals with that. Right, uh, okay. Even so loud festivals. And I notice you've yeah. got a couple of contact mics here as well, or, or mics, some additional microphones. That, yeah, sa right. that sounds wonderful, by the way. So um, we've got this Geophone. It's uh, pretty new. It comes in this box. 
uh, with some different mounting possibilities like this clamp, uh, suction cup, magnet and so on. Right. And as an add-on we have this bow holder, uh, we call it bow holder, and then you are able to um, adjust the, the angle of it because it is a, a capsule which uh, with a magnetic um, thingy <laughs> normally used in uh, seismic measurements like earthquake detection. Right, so extremely low frequencies I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, extremely low and we use it to build microphones from it and now you only hear the contact mic and now Oh wow! That's astonishing. And when you want to have this uh, cinematic rumble in sound design, oh yeah, that you have, for example, a big metal object or metal sheet, and want to scratch it, and you need this really cinematic effect of it. It's the sub. Then adding the sub. Yeah, that's your thing. It picks up frequencies from 15 hertz upwards. Wow, that's amazing. So what? I, I mean, uh, and I guess you, is that similar thing going over here? Is that another one of those, or is it? Uh, this is a contact microphone. This is a new new model just released this month, and will be in the shops now uh, during the next time. <laughs> oh, that was me. I got the gain up to get the rumble in. Sorry for this. Um, it comes in this package with this neoprene pouch. Two different versions with a uh, big jack and small jack. Right. This is the microphone itself. Yeah. Um, and we made a whole package of mounting possibilities. This is, you can snap this ring over it. So you can use, for example, rubber bands to mount it on objects. Oh, okay. So yeah. you don't have to glue it with tape or so. And then, uh, we did a cooperation with sound designer Robert Dutzig from the, UK, uh, from the US. Um, he's doing lots of cinematic stuff, like movies, games, etc. And he likes the old model of our contact mic a lot and uses it all the time. And he came up with the idea of this probe. So we did a cooperation and we engineered his probe idea right. even further. So you can use the ring and this as a counterpart, snap it on, and then you have this probe which you can stick into soil and you can record worms and insects and oh, stuff like this. Oh, wow, okay. With that, or uh, he did this experiment with, he had this rotating small table with um, water and ice cubes in it. And then he was rotating the table and uh, picking up the sound from the water and ice cubes and stuff, wow, uh, hitting, hitting the probe. And this... Sound really uh, unusual, I'd imagine. Yeah, unusual. Yeah, and it's made for this kind of experimentation. So, what's it doing in here then? We've got. Uh, I wanted to bring a bucket of soil and worms, but I was flying from Germany, so yeah, there's couldn't it, bring that. There's, sorry, there's restrictions on that sort of stuff. Uh, wait, I have to turn it up possibly a little bit. Um, I might be. I might have a bit of gain here. I've got some too. Just a little bit of this soil idea. So the probe sort of goes and it it it, res it it's attached to the diaphragm, so you it, you get acoustic link acoustically linked. I see. Yeah, right. We we did. We went through several versions of it, and uh, in the end, just that little bit of yeah. we came up with this uh, kind of dot, which then applies pressure to this. Uh, piezo element, which is and then, the then there's that, all that leverage, right? So okay. it goes uh, as direct as, as possible, right? Uh, and you can also take it off. There's an Allen key coming with it, so you can take the probe off, uh, use longer probes, or you can mount it on objects. How interesting! You know, it's it's for it's kind of like macro sound, isn't it? Almost, it's really interesting, an sure. interesting world that I guess many of us don't. I mean, the most most of us just hear us. You know, you can rub your fingers next to your ear. That's about as small a sound as we're probably exposed to most of the time. Yeah, right. Yeah, everything we do is about body sound transmission, and it's uh, the funny thing about this is we're used to hear uh, via airborne sound yeah. to our ears over the air, yeah. and same uh, same with microphones. It goes travels through the air before it hits the the microphone. True. And um, with contact microphones and stuff, you switch the hearing perspective, and it's suddenly you're hearing from inside of the materials, and this is an interesting effect uh, per se. Yeah. So 
Yeah, and yeah, yeah. If you work with these and add it to your music or to your sound design, it's a very good trick. Absolutely. So uh, the mics are new, you say. Do, what, do, do you know what the rough, the rough price is of those? Uh, the contact mic, this one is 75 pounds. Okay. It's in the UK, it's available through KMR. Yeah. Uh, in the rest of Europe, it's through Exploding Shed or Toman and some other shops. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, about the Geo, the Geo mic as well? Uh, the the Geophone is about 190. Okay. Or no. Nee. Do you need? I, I mean, do you, what sort Sorry. of gain? What sort of gain preamps do you? Do you need like special preamps to get the most out of these? Yes. Uh, when we started with the Soundbox. Um, I'm working with contact microphones since the late 90s. Right. And, and this idea of this box, like a wooden a piece of wood with contact microphones and some objects on it, I made my first one of these in 97. And since then, I was working with that in my right. own music. And then um, we really engineered a product out of it. And we realized the preamps are really important. So we, yeah. uh, the trick is to find a good piezo element as contact mic, mm -hmm. uh, not these Chinese no-name stuff. Yeah. So find a good one, really good one. And we selected really good ones from dozens of variations. And then we made a preamp, which is impedance matched to the contact mic. Right. And this really is the trick. If you connect a contact microphone directly to the RME inputs, it sounds way more shitty. And that's not because it's just because they're not matched. Yeah, it's, it's it doesn't match, and um, you get so where, so noise. where are the because are, are these just going directly into because you've got a, a, a oh that's this is your own preamp is it this right. is our preamp yeah ah okay so that's what right because after the soundbox release uh, sound designers came and say I don't need the box but the preamp quality is fucking awesome and we want the amp ah, so, so you made sell that as well this as a separate product what is yes. the, what does that cost uh, it's 189 okay so uh, I mean for, for specialized uh, for, for something so specialized it's pretty reasonable because I mean most most specialized pro I mean you could say this is kind of pro audio equipment in a macro but it's a different sort of field of pro audio I suppose it's a yeah I think unique. I mean this, this costs 250 euros and um, what 259 mean well um, we try to to get it in a, in, a, in a good range. Yeah. So, and I think this was uh, part of the success also. I mean, we don't make so much money on that, actually. But you can sell more, yeah. But we can sell more and we built, it happened that we built our reputation on, right. on this topic and on the price range we had initially. And we don't like to get ripped off ourselves, you know? Yeah. So, so we try to find oh, good. a That's fair range somehow. A good company philosophy. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming.